Hello, good afternoon, students. So welcome to my class. It's nice to see you even though we're doing this online conferencing of our discussion. So but before we start our discussion or session this afternoon, let's wait for the others to join. And I think uh, everybody is present. Before we start our discussion, let's have first an opening prayer. Let's close our eyes. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you also for the gift of life. We thank you for guiding us every day, enlighten our minds as we go on to our discussion this afternoon. And this we ask in your most precious name. Amen. Good afternoon, students, again. Welcome to my class. And I will be your teacher for the subject Technology for Teaching and Learning 2. I am Joel Santi Alea. So let's proceed. Yes. Okay, our first lesson is all about the K-12 curriculum framework. When we hear the word K-12 curriculum framework, what comes first to in, or what comes first into your mind? Uh, we have Lime. Do you have any uh, idea about the K-12 curriculum framework? Okay, thank you so much, Lime Pastoretti, for that wonderful uh, idea about this uh, lesson or concept. So the implementation. Uh, as we go on to this uh, discussion, let's have, let's have these uh, learning objectives. So our first learning objective is all about discuss the studying features of the K-12 curriculum requiring ICT pedagogy integration skills. Sorry for that. And also second, analyze the learning competencies of every year level according to the field of specialization of the pre-service teacher. The third one will be review some units in the curriculum guide with focus on the development of 21st century skills. We have here a quote. quote uh, quoted by Benigno Aquino, our president, uh, the ex-president of the Philippines, say, uh, stated that the Kitachal program will pave the way for an ever brighter future for young Filipinos, like giving them with basic education up to international standards. So as you all know that the pres that President Benigno Aquino was the one who signed the, the mandatory two years, additional two years in the secondary level in the grade 11 and 12. For this, uh, which was because uh, he sees that this program will pave the way for, to have a brighter future uh, you students um, uh, for you to be equipped enough uh, from the basic education up to international standards so international not only international but internationally so by this program this will make the graduates of the secondary level to be prepared enough and ready to face the challenges in the future so K-12 implementation is uh, paved the way for the enhancement of the teacher education curriculum of the Commission of the Higher Education. So as you go along on the higher education uh, at the college level, uh, if you choose education uh, program, this will also help to enhance the teacher education curriculum for all the teacher, uh, teacher education students who took education program. This, uh, this will help them to enhance the, the learning or their learnings as the, what they uh, acquired during their K-12 uh, years. In the K-12, we have also here the solid features. So we have, uh, I think we have seven, seven, uh, six solid features of the K-12. So the first one will be strengthening early childhood education. From the world strengthening, strengthening rather, to strengthen in, in desire or in Tagalog, you have uh, para maging, uh, uh, what do you call this? You uh, para mold, mold, it, mold enough you para your early education, childhood education, or the universal kindergarten. In this uh, salient feature state that with the universal kindergarten program of the department, every Filipino child is expected to have access to early child education. This access can be facilitated using technological tools that are readily available to the school for teachers. In this salient features, it's stated that every Filipino child is expected to have an access to early childhood education. So in the salient features of the fifth child, so first, you have to undergo the universal kindergarten. So every Filipino must have to access. Hindi pwede yung parang pinito ka na sa grade one. Yan. But you have to, um, sa, 
uh, we, you have to undergo universal kindergarten or the kindergarten stage. Okay, are we good with that? So by this also, this these uh, seven features can be accessed through uh, by the facilitated of technological tools that are really readily available to the school for teachers use. In the, uh, the use of technology in kindergarten by the various schools is very evident for uh, in teaching and learning kindergarten pupils. The alphabet, uh, numbers, shapes, and colors through games, songs, and dances in their mother tongue. So by the use of the mother tongue, they can easily understood the understand the, the topic, okay, the topic that will be teach uh, to them, the concepts all about the alphabets, songs, or uh, numbers, shapes, uh, colors, and each of them. Okay, we're going to be the first study feature. Second, we have the making curriculum relevant to the learners. But the world is, uh, word itself relevant, but you have the connection to the learners. So that the curriculum must, must have the connection to the learners or the contextualization and enhancement. So research shows that learners will, will value a curriculum that is relevant to the, their lives. Sarah Bernard, uh, 2010, stressed that Students need to have a personal connection to a lesson material that can be done through engaging them emotionally or through connecting the information with what they already know. So by this, uh, by the stage, uh, what stated by, uh, by Sarah Bernard, it's he, uh, she stated that students must, must have a personal connection to the lesson for them to what? Anyone? Okay, for them to understand the lesson fully because they, are, uh, they have a connection. Okay, but if they have the connection, so it can be uh, the learners will easily get the point of the lesson. Do you get me? Okay, thank you so much. So we have also here, according to Blinks 2014, shared some points in, or tips for making learning engaging and personally relevant. So according to Blinks, we he um, gave some few tips in for making the learning engaging to the learners and personally relevant to the learners. So we have here use suspense and keep it fresh. So by this, um, before uh, uh, in doing the discussion, you must drop hints about a new learning unit before you reveal what it might be. So before you start the discussion, no, you have to uh, say that what will be our discussion this afternoon? You have to ask your student or uh, you suspense questions for them to, to trigger their minds of what really the topic is all about. And also here we have leave the uh, change the setting arrange, arrangements and put an, up new and relevant posters or display about the topics and all this can act with emotional signals and keep students interested uh, to the topic. Okay, use suspense and keep it fresh. That is the first one. The few uh, uh, first tips, uh, first tip of uh, how to make learning engaging. Second one will be make it student centered or directed. So give students a choice of assignments on a particular topic or ask them to design one of their own. When students are involved in designing the lesson, they better understand the goal of the lesson and become more emotional, emotionally interested in, in and attached to the learning outcomes. It's, a bit, uh, uh, it's very understandable that you have to, in making your lesson, it must be a student directed. Uh, you have to give them the choice uh, that they're to, to design one of their own, okay? Third, we have connected to their lives and to what they already know. So taking the time to brainstorm about the students already know and would like to learn about the topic helps them to create goals. So if the topic is connected to their lives or very relevant and they think that they already know about it, so they, they, this will uh, engage students to lesson because they believe that they know it and they connect it to their lives and they want to, to understand it fully. Next, we have provide utility value. 
creativity body provides relevance first to equipping students and telling them the content is important to their future goals. Uh, explain to them why they should take their this topic because uh, and explain it right and uh, give them hints and give uh, uh, explain them explain, explain it to them that it's very essential to their future endeavor or goals in life. Next, we have build relatedness. Relatedness, on the other hand, answers the question, what have this to do with me? So ask them, uh, in, in, enable the students to ask the, themselves, uh, um, what have this to do with me? Uh, this topic was, uh, let them ask this, themselves, what this topic can do with me? And yeah. You have to build relatedness to the students. So when they, when they come up with an idea, oh, this this topic is very important, and it's really give me um, a bunch of information for me to grow. Now, okay, are we good with that? Okay, thank you so much. So everyone is listening. I guess okay, it's forty three per entire, and thank you so much for uh, staying with us this afternoon. Third, we have. Building proficiency or mother tongue or bilingual education. To be able to promote a child's uh, dominant language, to use it as a language of instruction, maximum use of technological tools is highly encouraged. Children learn better and more active in class and learn a second language even faster when they are first taught in language they understand. Okay, it's very understandable here in the last sentence here. Children learn better and more active in class and learn a second language even faster when they are first taught in the language they understand. So if the learners will be taught, uh, if their mother tongue will be Tagalog or Bisaya, so if the, uh, their mother tongue will um, talk uh, all about Bisaya, so they must be first taught in the language of the Bisaya for them to understand. Do not teach them directly through the Galog or English because that is not their first language, okay? Are you listening? Okay, thank you so much. Move on to the next, ensuring integrated and seamless learning or the spiral progression. Learning basic concepts that lead to a more complex and sophisticated version of the general concepts entail HIPAA, or we have here the technological knowledge, uh, pedagogical knowledge, and content knowledge. This will further strengthen retention and will enhance mastery of the topics and skills as they are revisited and consolidated time and again. This also allows learners to learn topics and skills appropriate to their developmental and cognitive skills. Okay? TPAP, remember TPAP, technological knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and content knowledge. So in this uh, certain features, they have this uh, spiral progression. Okay, this will enhance mastery of the topics and skills. Next, gearing up for the future. The Kito Child curriculum ensures college, college readiness by aligning the core and applied courses of the college readiness standards or CRS and new general education curriculum. So by the, the Kito Child curriculum, it ensures the students to be college ready or in the higher education level it, uh, but also you have to align the core and applied courses to the college also i have here the room stem gas and the tbl okay gas you stem and your tbl another uh, like uh, tbl after the tbl we have different types of tbl programs so by that it will really uh, prepare the students in the in, uh, in K-12 to enter the college level. Are we good with that? Okay, thank you so much. So, we have here the academic. Uh, so, hence the K-12 uh, curriculum focus on the developing, developing appropriate specialization subjects for the academic. For the academic, we have sports, arts, design, and technical vocational livelihood tracks. So all of these specialization subjects have to be supported by educational technology for 
better learning. So by this, you have to integrate uh, a technology, a technological tools for them to understand, to learn better. Okay. Next, we have the last one: nurturing the holistically, uh, nurture, nurturing the holistically, holistic, holistically developed Filipino or the college and livelihood readiness or the twenty first century skills. To nurture holistically developed Filipino, every every Filipino graduate is expected to be ready to go into different paths, higher education, employment, or entrepreneurship. So some of the students after they graduate in the Filipino uh, program or the secondary level, they go for employment. So the Filipino really a uh, big a big help to those students who don't, who don't have plan to go for the higher education because they can. Uh, they can assure that they can uh, have their job because of this uh, different, uh, the different paths. So uh, we have higher education for those who wants to go to college, employment, entrepreneurship, who wants to build businesses. Okay, every graduate is, graduate is, is expected to be equipped, equipped with information, media, and technological skills, learning and innovation skills, effective communication skills, and life and career skills. Note that teachers play a very important role in the facil facilitation of student learning by designing, implementing, and evaluating the curriculum. In the Philippines, teachers are expected to actively engage themselves in curriculum design to ensure that the pedagogical curriculum will be best delivered to fully realize its intended learning outcomes. So teachers make decisions about how they will implement the curriculum of their specific field of specialization. They decide on how they must structure the activities of the third lessons and manage students' responses and ideas. Hence, the decision of the teachers is very important. It, ha it has an impact on the students' learning indeed. Thank you so much. The next topic will be for the lesson that lesson two is all about the ICT pedagogy integration in language learning. Okay? So by the end of this uh, lesson, the learner should be able to, we have also here the learning objectives. First, we have discuss essential points to consider when integrating any ICT in facilitating language education. Present, present, uh, present learning plans that integrate ICT in the learning procedures to be able to attain the learning outcomes and plan for some activities that will help develop digital citizenship and relate this to the development of 21st century skills among learners. We have also here a quote by Chris Diddy. Okay, Diddy. Okay, Diddy. Uh, when we talk about 21st century pedagogy, we have to consider many things that the, the objectives of the education, the curriculum, how assessment strategies work, the kind of technology infrastructure involved, and how leadership and policy facilitate in attaining the education goals. So he, uh, he stated that in the 21st century pedagogy, we, we uh, the teacher must have to consider many things to attain the education goals. During say I speak pedagogy, Teaching has always been a challenging profession since knowledge has been expanding and essential skills have, have been increasing and changing. Yes, indeed. Teaching is really flexible in all aspects because you know what? Uh, that this profession is as, uh, it's as the curriculum improves, so teachers must have or that must expand their knowledge and skills to cope up with a new uh concepts so you have to really have to be flexible enough so with this challenges teachers need to educate engage educational technologies to assist them in teaching learning process so as that as time uh, is uh, as time uh, as the, the technology is uh, uh modernizing so teachers must engage in edu educational technologies for them to hook up uh, not relying on the traditional standard or the traditional approach, but they really have to uh, 
to be case to the new approach or the, the new generation approach when we have the technology applied by the technological tools. Okay. Integrating technology in instruction. So in ICT, the information communication technology, integrated technology in instruction. So according to Jan Pisapia 1994, integrating technology with teaching means the use of learning technologies to introduce, reinforce, supplement, and extend skills. On the other hand, integrating technology into curricula can mean different things. Computer science courses, computer-assisted instruction, and computer enhanced or increased instruction, matching software with basic skills, competencies, and keyboard with word processing, follow-up with presentation tools. We have also here the International Society for Technological Technology and Education, or ST. We have effective integration of technology is achieved when students are able to select technological tools to help them obtain information in a timely manner, analyze and synthesize the information and present it professionally. And according also to Margaret Lloyd, 2005, ICT integration encompasses on integral part of broader curriculum reforms with, which include both infrastructural as well as pedagogical consideration that are changing not only how learning occurs but uh, how uh, but what is learned. Okay, understood? Okay, uh, everyone, can you hear me? Okay, thank you so much. And uh, let's move on. According to Kiyon Huang and Wai Lit Wu in 2000 and what, what year is this? 2007, integrating information and communication or ICT into teaching and learning is a growing area that has attracted many educators' efforts in recent years. Based on the scope of content covered, ICT efforts in recent years can happen in three different areas curriculum, topic, and lesson. Bernard Bahati 2010 stated that the process of integrating ICT in teaching and learning has to be done at both pedagogical and technological levels with much emphasis but on pedagogy. ICT integration into teaching and learning has to be underpinned by sound pedagogical principles. And according to UNESCO 2020, uh, ICT integration is not merely mastering the hardware and the software skill. Teacher must realize how to organize classroom various tasks so that ICT can auto uh, automatically reinforce the needs of the learning environment. Information communication and technology or ICT. According to Moore Sound 2005, ICT includes all the full range of computer hardware, computer software, and telecommunication uh, facilities. So yeah, uh, thus it includes computer device ranging from the handheld calculators to multi-million worth software computers. According also to Tini 2009, ICT is a diverse set of technological tools and resources used to communicate, create, disseminate, store, and manage information. So ICT is very important in, in education as these technological tools will be uh, will aid the, uh, the, 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 the teaching and the learning of students through communication and how to create and disseminate information or store and manage it, okay? According to UNESCO 2020, ICT is a diverse set of technological tools and resources used to transmit, store, create, share, or exchange information. So it defines also as a scientific, technological, and engineering discipline management used. Okay, are we good? Everyone, can you see, uh, do you understand the lesson? Anthony, uh, Jessa, are you there? Okay, how about LV and Angela? Okay, thank you so much. I, I think you are, are listening and you really understood the topic this is because it's very essential to you as a student. 
according to Rapis Guare, 2018 brother, information communication technology or ICT influences every aspect of life. Yes, indeed. Because as we different, uh, as we go, we go with different uh, places, information communication technology is really applied. Okay. Deeply salient, uh, deeply salient tools in workplaces, yes. In your jobs, in businesses, in example for online, education also for research and entertainment and using ICT integration frameworks in language educational learning plans. Uh, ICT using ICT integration frameworks in language educational learning plans. So according to conversation conversational framework of Larry Lard, Larry uh, Lau. Lowry Liard, 2000 and 2002, stated that the teaching learning process involves extremely difficult tasks in order for students to comprehend their lessons and master the skills they are required to demonstrate. This framework proposes a method of representing teaching and learning as events. Acquisition, discover, dialogue, practice, and creation are the ones that had been established. Uh, using the concepts of instructionism, instructionism, social learning, constructionism, and interactive learning. The conversational framework supports the notion that teaching is a dialogue that reveals what it takes to learn. Okay. Next, we have categories for information, communication, and technology, ICT, in teaching, in teacher training. So categories for information, communication, technology, ICT, teacher training, framework is framework in language learning plans supports had that 2003 on the development of higher order thinking skills and promotes collaboration when used correctly. Next, we have according to UNESCO ICT competency framework for teaching. ICT uh, education for teaching and ethics. Ah, no, for, for teach, uh, for, again, sorry, for teachers, okay? The UNESCO ICT competency framework for teacher teachers seeks to foster education improvement and sustainable economic growth based on the values and priorities of the Millennium Development Goals of the MDG, Education for All, the IFA, the United Nations Literacy, Literacy Decade or UNLD, and the Decade of Education for Sustainable Development or DST or Three fundamental elements of the ICT integration by 1, 2008 uh, stated that assert that integration of ICT consists of three fundamental elements. These are the pedagogy, social interaction, and technology. Remember that the Commission of the Higher Education or CHED creates policy standards and guidelines or PSGs requires integration of ICTs in language teaching and learning. Our lesson three is all about inquiry-based learning and research-based learning. So at the end of the lesson, students should be able to, we have also the learning objectives, discuss the salient features of inquiry-based learning and research-based learning and their application to the attainment, attainment of language learning competencies and language learning outcomes. Analyze how technologies for teaching and learning languages can be maximized and maximize inquiry-based learning and research-based learning, and state some performance standards from the curriculum guide that can employ inquiry-based learning and research-based learning. We have here a quote stated that, an anonymous, uh, an anonymous quote stated that inquiry-based learning goes far beyond simply asking the student, what do you want to know and or what they are interested in? It's all about triggering curiosity. In the employee-based learning. So IBL, in its simplest definition, is a process of asking questions also as an approach to teaching and learning that puts students and their questions, ideas, and thoughts at the center of their learning experiences and practice. Practice, okay? But the word itself, process of asking questions, inquiry-based inquiry learning. So IBL, nature of inquiry-based learning. In the classroom, in particularly the process of inquiry-based learning activity that every teacher is expected to facilitate, according to the future jobs report during the World Economic Forum, the top three skills needed 
at in this day in this age are complex problem solving critical thinking and creativity grade 16 which all start from asking multiple perspectives we have here the the the, the types of inquiry okay Okay, 2023, according to VA 2020, we have the structured inquiry. This lets the students follow uh, the lead of the teacher, sorry. The teacher as this entire class engages in one inquiry question. So we have controlled inquiry. The teacher chooses topics and identifies the resources that the students will use to answer questions. We'll give our resources. So guided inquiry, the teacher chooses topics or questions and students design the product or solution. We have here the rule of uh, the rule of the teacher. Uh, okay. The language teacher needs to look into the learning competence system and be satisfied with a simple inquiry or more complex inquiry. In designing IPL proposed by Absec and Cousin two thousand sixteen. We have here the, the, the prior knowledge capacity, context, learners require meaning from experiences, content and learning materials, process, strategy of interaction, interactions and behavior, course outcomes. The role of technology. Language is no longer a barrier in one's search of, uh, for information depending on the unit of study in the language curriculum. There are many free educational websites that are available for the language teachers and learners. So our topic for this, uh, this discussion is all about problem-based learning and project-based learning. Okay, so at the end of the lesson, students should be able to, we have also here the learning objectives of this lesson discuss the studied features of the problem-based learning and project-based learning and their application to the attainment of the learning competencies and learning outcomes. Analyze how technologies for teaching and learning can be maximized in the problem-based learning and project-based learning. Okay. And lastly, share some performance standards from the curriculum guide that can employ problem-based learning and project-based learning. According to Sandy Huda, we create learners who are life ready so that they can apply their knowledge to real life situations. So the protection itself says that the teachers or the, the, the educators create learners who are life ready para in the Galog or in the Messiah, para po, para the students will have to face the reality in the future uh, by the using their knowledge, they can apply the give to the real life situation and we can use it to, to combat the uh, real world okay the, the, their future in either as an individual so about project uh, about the project based learning and project based learning so project pbl or the project based learning students have to present a solution to a clearly defined authentic problem while project based learning students have to uh, produce an artifact or demonstrate their mastery of the content. Nature of the problem-based learning. So problem-based learning is an approach that involves the process of inquiry and solving open-ended questions that serve as a main problem that the learners will work on. In the process of engaging in PB PBL or the project-based learning, they learn several skills such as problem solving, communicating, research among others which are essential in the workplace so the end of the goal of the PBL is to ensure that the target and the learn, learning competencies are achieved in the process in the process so according to Al 2019 described the PBL as a process that is used to identify problems with a scenario to increase knowledge and understanding in her article she, she proposed also five principles of the PBL we have here the five five principles of PBL according to Al 2019. We propose six stage process goes in adoption of the online PBL. So we have here. Next, we have the benefits of problem based learning according to Gofron or and Ermawari 
2018. So, benefits of problem-based learning according to Ali and Darren in 2019. Also, according to English Foreign Language or EFL, the benefits of problem solving of so learning are in India 2017 revealed that statistically the PBL participants showed more improvement in their reading comprehension than the non-PBL participants. The research also found that the PBL participants' active English learning attitudes are significantly significantly related to their reading comprehensions. The acceptability of the PBL yeah, as an approach on teach, for teaching and learning does not only involve learners but also the teachers. It's not only about the learners, okay, but also for the teacher. Uh, it's also. So in the study of Marcos F. and Subchik, Subchik 2019, they sought to establish the teacher's attitudes on a problem-based teaching of literature. Also, we have in the PBL or problem based learning and project based learning is the role of the technology. What is the role of technology in this uh, learning or the PBL? So, according to Head Verge and Post Wire 2019, stress that technology is simply the mediator for collaboration and representation, and that is the type of task and thinking process in which students engage that determine the quality of learning. We have also here the productivity tools, okay? such as those writing presentations, script sheets, calendars, and organizers, citations, what, what are these, uh, citations, and others are also available to assist learners and teachers in accomplishing required tasks and outputs from the PBL activity. Okay, let's move on. Nature of project-based learning approach, or, or learning approach. So the, Project-based learning or approach is an approach that has evolved, evolved as a teaching method that engages, engages learners in a series of planned tasks resulting to the generation solution to real-world problems. If you have, um, you can, you can oh yeah, yeah, you can email me or you can contact me to text or call to, to enlighten me some of the topics or the points, some points that you don't uh, understand or you have the you struggle to understand, okay? And you don't don't hesitate to contact me by that okay? because your learning is the top priority of this uh, uh, subject or class, okay? If you don't have any questions, let's end this meeting or session. Let's close our eyes and then we'll bother the Sun Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to thank you for the, 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 the learnings that we've uh, gathered or acquired this session and I hope those learnings will be applied on the life of, of my students as we as they go on along the way of their um, you know, the paths and their education. We ask uh, your guidance and your divine intervention in our life. We ask this in your most precious name. Amen. Goodbye students. See you, uh, see you next week in our next online session. This about our topic, our subject, technology for teaching and learning too.